I came all the way from Brazil, still a little jet lag. <laughs> Uh, Gonzalo, Beatriz, Isabel, thank you, all my fellow mates here. I cannot start this talk now with uh, my heart filled with sadness and outrage for the killing of Don Phillips, a British journalist who was killed in the Amazon, and also Bruno Pereira, a Brazilian indigenous researcher. They, their bodies were found yesterday, and we are very moved by that. And what I can say, Gonzalo, is that we have in Brazil a president who is running against human rights, who is running against all of what we are here standing for. So I apologize, but Fora Bolsonaro is a cry that is struck in our hearts. I thank you. Well, first of all, I would like to salute the entire organization of this very important and significant meeting. I'd like to thank Professor Gonzalo Muniz, Professor Beatriz, Isabel, and all the, all the other crew of the Urbinat Committee um, for, the for the opportunity to participate in the Urbinat project as observer of these experiences that merges intellectual and practical efforts in the search of more resilient and fair cities, where democracy and ecology are j not just empty words, but active and participatory process of the entire society. Last year, in the midst of, a pan of pandemics, we organized a similar congress online to expose to managers and technicians from municipalities in Paraná, the state which I represent as a deputy, the concepts and possibilities that Urbinat Project provides in the fair expectation that will be expanded and replicated. I will try to be brief and clear in this precious time. I maybe extend a little bit. Uh, I was given to exercise the privilege of addressing, so to speak, an audience of world dimensions. Needless to say, it's an honorable occasion for me. I believe the gravity and of the simultaneous and parallel crises occurring these days, and which have their most dramatic expression in our cities, are in the minds of all those present in this forum. We have the climate crisis bringing up the fragility and vulnerability of our cities, no longer in the just in the so-called third world, but in all four corners of the world. And we have the democracy crisis accompanied, accompanied by outbreaks of authoritarianism and the temptation of forceful solutions, um, that is, in which unanimity is sometimes achieved under threat and out of obedience, often arising as a dark avatar of fascism. Strictly speaking, neither of these crises represent greater novelty in themselves. In the case of environmental crises, however, what is new is the degree of intensity, frequency, and the extent of the damages with which we are constantly surprised. In the case of the simultaneous and parallel crises of democracies, ever more frequently reaching unexpected places from which we had always expected stability and institutional solidity, suggests that something new and unseen also seems to be present. As for how we have been fighting either of these crises, there does not seem to be any major novelty in the way we think about them, be it through the deepening of democracy as a method for taking action and solving practical problems, or in the search for environmental solutions that bring us closer to nature. In the two sets of remedies for the political and environmental illness of our, our planet suffers from, we will find both recent and ancient historical examples. What may be distinct is our effort to rediscover some very simple truths, which perhaps have been somewhat left behind, either because of the difficulty of seeing in the dark, or because it is hard to stand on clear concepts when we are in full vertigo of a new cycle of crisis. However, it is worth remembering the resilient capacity of human beings 
that are able to present high degrees of creativity and boldness precisely in these moments of rupture. The thesis that we would like to reinforce here in the Urbinat meeting is precisely that these two assumptions are the way out of the uncertainty that paralyzes us and leads us to a future of hopelessness and the perpetuation of inequalities. As for democracy as a method, allow me to evoke a passage from classical literature that illustrates what I would like to bring to your consideration. It refers to that extremely dramatic moment in Xenophon's Anabasis, when the Greek mercenaries in the service of Cyrus, in the war he was waging against his brother, the king, find themselves in the heart of Persian territory, now alone and without their patron who perished in battle, and without his immediate chiefs who had been lured into a snare by Artaxerxes and executed. It is worth saying that these so-called 10,000 find themselves in an absolutely desperate situation, surrounded by dangerous enemies without command and without a defined destination or direction. What do they do in such an emergency? They meet in assembly, elect new leaders, collectively assess the situation, and as a group, through rapid consensus building, define tactics, distribute tasks, and follow the long way back to their homes. The infinite obstacles on the way will be overcome one by one, always using the same methods. The classic account is the story of a fighting democracy. For us who breathed the air of this early decade, almost 25 centuries after this story was told, global dangers, both political and ecological, as we are stressing here, are posed with equal gravity and urgency. Human actions have been modifying the natural landscapes at a pace never seen before, and man as the predator of his own kind figures as the modus operandi of this tragedy. The emphasis on taking concrete actions to raise awareness and mobilize communities seeking the values and principles of mutual help, cooperation, empathy, compassion, and reconnection with the natural world is the core of what I would like to bring up in my speech. Society and the city as a site of struggles of individual and collective interests require all of us to operate on a level I call micropolitics, uh, which are our attitudes in our immediate circle of relationships, and the macropolitics that configures mov movements that are often distant and surgical and which transform reality from top to bottom. The great movements of goods, the capital, the established global hierarchies, opportunities and jobs in capitalist societies must be balanced by individuals and communities aware of themselves and of their place in this broader context. It is also possible from the bottom up to operate urban and geopolitical transformations that indicate possibilities of resignifying this reality to which they want to submit us. From Guy Debord society of spectacle to David Harvey's rebel cities, a cry for revolution, always latent, latent in our hearts, can be ignited. I will jump the other pages so I won't take so long and go to our, my conclusion, I'm sorry. Um, uh, let me just hear. In summary, I would like to say that democracy as a method of working and solving problems in the key of the collective and the macro in opposition to authoritarian uprisings could be defined as a radicalization of popular participation, of active listening and empowerment of communities, the development of forms of direct democracy, of co-creation, of co-responsibility, of collective care for cities, whether in micro or macro politics, in the discussion that concerns the street, the water stream that runs behind our house, and also in zoning and mobility policies that affect entire neighborhoods, that affect large, large cities and their surroundings. Democracy as a method presupposes a new or rather renewed respect for people, for their participation in decision making, also 
also as an antidote to authoritarianism and fascism. And on the other hand, it implies solutions based on nature, the rescue of forgotten ecological practices, the reaffirmation of the environmental and ecological balance of cities, with the recovery of our rivers, the preservation and expansion of forest areas, and with the promotion of urban and peri-urban organic agriculture. Here, then, are the methods that we believe are capable of leading us to a horizon of sustainable prosperity, of better quality of life, of radical attenuation of inequalities, also remember that, remembering that it's in the cities that we seek access to culture, health, and education facilities. More than that, it is above all in cities that we seek to meet our fellow human beings, an encounter that defines and fulfills us. Thank you very much.